Hello there and welcome back to The Closet Historian and another episode of Cataloging Catalogs. This is the Spring and Summer 1946 Montgomery Wards catalog. The Spring and Summer catalogs do have a lot of winter wear in the beginning of them because of course it is quite chilly in spring in many places in the United States. Um, so there is a lot of suiting and coats in the beginning of this catalog we'll notice. And here on the inside cover we have gabardine fabrics of distinction. So this is going to be wool gabardine I'm sure. We do have a gray suit here paired with a matching colored hat tilted very low and forward on the head as we can see here um, with a black glove paired with this. I assume they also paired this with black shoes, but of course we can't see. The suit of course does have structure and shoulder padding going on here in addition to having the armhole dropped a little bit. This is um, much more of like a dropped sleeve. Here in 1946 we still do have the full swing of the strong shoulder of course. And this skirt seems to have a slight A-line shape to it. And there's a split down the center of the skirt. This could be an overlap. I'm not sure. Let me see if it's a fin tuck below waist and fly pleat front gourd back talon zipper placket. So this is shut with a zipper. It's not a wrap skirt, but it does have this tuck down the center front here that continues the line of the jacket, which is, of course, uh, like lengthening to have the line go all the way down the center of the body like that. We have the same color continuing on over here in our 100% virgin wool gabardine coat and mandarin suit. A distinctive fabric combines with superlative Carol Brent tailoring. Coat is clean lined and direct, becoming over dresses and wardrobe separates as well as a suit combination, carefully rounded collar and reverse saddle stitch, south fabric buttons, hand bound buttonholes and back kick pleat. Expert attention to detail and this suit here uh, the top coat alone is $35. The two piece suit is again $35. So a uh, investment to have the full set going on in the three-piece and it is really hard to find a three-piece um, suit from the 1940s still all together. A lot of times people break things up and nothing bothers me more when I see a seller online who is selling a jacket and skirt that do match separately. And on the next page we have more again wool suiting still keeping warm here in early spring and again note how strong and uh, shoulder these things are and this this outfit in general is just so boxy uh, by modern standards it looks very 80s um, but that's because, of course, the 80s was copying the 1940s. Um, I don't mind a boxy coat, but I prefer a slimmer suit underneath. But this ensemble here, I think, would be my pick of the first few pages here. In a black and white check wool paired with black, of course, here we all know how I love to wear black. But we can also note here uh, in these suits in the start how short these skirts are. These are just past knee length. This is, of course, just post-war. And we have some probably fabric rationing uh, influencing style, at least even if the rationing was not always in place anymore, it still had influenced fashion um, to have those shorter skirt lengths. They do drop down again into the 50s. And on the next page, we do have some color coming in, including the suit from the cover image here. So here's what the jacket looks like closed up. Of course, the skirt is matching, so you don't really notice a big distinction there. This is a big cinched waist on this. This uh, like shape of coat was very much something you could find in the late 70s and into the 80s as well. So I always recommend checking out thrift stores to try and find 80s wool coats. A uh, full wool coat, especially in longer length than this, is very expensive to pick up nowadays, and they are quite warm and useful in cold areas. But I always recommend checking out the thrift store because you can get something that nowadays would cost you over $100 for usually under $10 sometimes at the thrift store. But what you can't find at the thrift store are suits like this, sadly enough. And this does say black accents, spring colors. So really they're speaking to my combining spring with a little bit of goth touch. Thank you, 1946. We have a suit and matching coat over here that has these buttons accenting. And again, these turn backs lined in black, which is just quite lovely, especially on the cuffs as well. You can easily do cuffs, by the way, of just making your sleeve extra long and then lining them and turning them back. It's an easy way to do cuffs without having to apply the cuffs separately. Then we have our truly spring suits here in our pastel Easter colors. We have our like robin's egg blue and our minty kind of clover and salmon pink here. And again, note just like how well in 1986, you could have gotten away with this look as well. And even the hair uh, is all right here. We might just have a bit more eyeliner going on and still more suiting on the next page. This time, at least we've paired this with a printed scarf, which is nice and fun, especially for again, springtime. But again, these three piece sets, so lovely to have and impossible now to find. More 1940s simple suiting going on here. These are not uh, super nipped in at the waist, you can see. Um, we're really, I mean, it comes into the waist a little bit, but it's not anything like the hourglass we will see as the new look really takes over later into the 1940s and as we shift into the 1950s. And again, here we have more of those boxy coats. Um, we can see the size of the buttons on these are really something that is uh, as exaggerated as the shape of the coat here, um, which adds a little bit of a surrealist touch, which I think these need 
because they are a little bit silly almost this giant rectangle of a coat and we do start getting into some more like rain coats the season's newest in rain or shine top coats so we have little trench coats here and again we do have the options of different uh prices for different qualities of fabric in the same design so this same jacket is available in three different fabrics for three different prices uh, the first being good quality cotton gabardine sturdy shower resistant twill uh, and natural or air force blue then we have better quality combed cotton gabardine so <laughs> still cotton gabardine but a little bit better apparently smoother rain resistant fabric in natural or air force blue and then best quality rain resistant paratroop twill rayon satin finish on one side cotton poplin back in black natural navy or air force blue and the difference in price on these the good quality cotton gabardine is seven dollars the better quality combed cotton gabardine is nine dollars and the best quality is up at fifteen dollars so nearly twice the price of the other two options and we do have new and improved rainwear fashion in waterproof plastic fabrics strong light in weight will not crack or peel well maybe maybe in the 40s it wouldn't crack or peel but by now maybe perhaps it would have but we have dupont vinyl coated nylon and goodrich vinyl plastic so we have these big chem chemical companies who are still uh, in charge of making plastics because it was still quite a new thing of course and the dupont vinyl coated nylon comes in red green air force blue or navy and the plastic coro seal comes in red, black, or green. So plastic raincoats definitely were around in the 1940s. It's a bit Blade Runner now, but it was certainly a thing. And of course my favorite resource for retro style plastic coats is still gonna be Elements Rainwear, and I can link them below. But we have lots of coats here up at the front until we get to hats. We have this sort of lacy, almost looks like a crocheted straw kind of number here this twist straw with a feather is very ele very elegant and i quite like that one this one's a little bit silly it looks almost like uh, some sort of like fruit bowl turned upside down with the chenille netting intense and then we have these really looks like a bowl <laughs> these pillbox shapes that are really worn quite tilted forward on the head you can see how close this is to her eyebrows it's worn quite low on the face and then the veil comes down under the chin the thing that always bothers me about these ads too is that it comes in so many colors so like d here comes in black navy light coffee gay fuchsia with all matching veils and then white with navy veil and of course we have this one here a telescoped crown sailor charmingly designed with saucy rolled brim and again this one comes with black with fuchsia ribbon brown with chartreuse hello navy with blue gray with navy white with navy state color in order <sighs> don't mind if i do and look at all these hats oh my goodness so many ones I would take home, no problem. We have this big feather puff with veiling, love it. This one with the two fake birds coming down the side, excellent. This one with the feathers up here, great. I mean, I would take one of each of half of these hats, especially in all the colors they offer. This one is almost the same kind of idea as this big feather puff, only done in flower petals, it looks like. I would assume that those are velvet. Flotatious flower of felt cloth, 70% new wool, 30% cotton, Tilt it smartly over one eye, wired ring for firm fit. So it's probably got that spring ring in the back. Colors black, light coffee, medium blue, gay fuchsia, gold, aqua, lime green, yes please, red, purple, violet, or white. Purple, violet. Yes please. They come in so many colors. And C here, it looks almost like taffeta. With a charming, softly tucked, ruffled double brim, shimmering rayon taffeta in a good quality in colorful plaid pattern or in plain color. Colorful mixed plaid or all black, navy, brown, white. Again, can I have one of each? This is the kind of hat that I could make though. So perhaps we could make something like that if that's something you're interested in. And over here, even more hats. This one seems to be styled after a men's fedora, although the inside crown has just been shrank, even though it's still tall. An interesting <clears throat> shape on that one. I quite like these sculpted numbers down here. This one is something that's possibly someone who could crochet could make, but not me because I cannot crochet or knit, sadly. And I think my favorite is either N or P here. So let's see what colors they come in. P comes in black, navy, red, white with white flowers, toast tan with eggshell. Oh, they even are nice enough to go with like sharp white on certain colors and ivory with others where that pairs better. But some of these are a little bit silly. If you had asked me, I would have said this is a 60s hat, but here we are in 1946. Same with this, you can see a pillbox on the back of the head, um, just with 1940s hair instead of 1960s beehive. But this is a very, a hat that would you would get away with in 
66 uh, no problem as well. And yet more hats, we're not done yet. Um, again, you can see with some of these, um, I had a question about this in my most recent hat video of whether or not the elastic or the bands in the back are supposed to go under the hair or over them. You can see like this hat here in E, it has the band to keep the hat on the head covered in flowers. So like decorated bands or bands that kind of match the hat are meant to go over the hair. And then like thin elastics and small like wires are supposed to go like into or under the hair or pinned onto the hair. Uh, sometimes you would be wearing these things with a hairnet as well and sometimes not. So it depends on the hat, whether or not the bands in the back are supposed to go under or over the hair. If they're decorated or if it's like a matching color felt, usually they're worn over the hair like this. But again, pages like this really illustrate the variety of hat styles that were available in just one season. So we have this straw boater here, which is just delicious <laughs> on the same page with this like small, almost mini strange little top hat thing. Another small boater with a smaller brim. This little buddy with uh, decorated to the point of being almost a different shape. So we have these brimmed hats, we have these small pillboxes, we have these more 50s looking hats even, um, in addition to the puffy front of the face sort of things, and a turban, all on the same page, you know? But goodness knows I would want J in every color, I'm sure. Again, in black, navy, or white, toast tan with turf tan, red with navy. Mm. And over here, once again, absolutely stunning hats. Look at this. Oh my god. It's. I mean, again, with like a Victorian costume, it would even be nice. But this hat, again, looks so 60s to me strange how these styles just continue on. This unassuming hat down here at W, this sort of like crown, it's a little bit taller in the uh, top above the hair here. These are so hard to find nowadays um, and they do go for quite a lot. This one came in black, navy, red, beige, medium blue, or gold. I would certainly like one in black and in navy. And again we have this little like straw pillbox with flowers on the band holding it on. You can see how much veiling is going on here as well. We have some there Carol Brent many occasion hats. So apparently these are good for many occasions. You can't beat that kind of value, huh? This is C down here. You can see it has a bit of a cap coming down on the back of the head to help hold it on at a right angle. This is super useful for people nowadays who would just stick a bobby pin in that under a flower and it would keep it on your head real well. Carol Brent bumper styled with a wonderfully new look in shiny, rich looking synthetic straws. Plenty of dash in the novel, creased crown, and all manner of good design sense in the deep back that ensures a comfortable stay put fit. Two gardenias, one at each side of the deep back, lend a delicate, charming, feminine air to this spring charmer. Wear it slightly forward, provocatively tilted over one eye, with soft mesh veiling providing face framing gentle accent. Colors black, medium blue, navy, dusty rose, purple violet, lime green, or white, all trimmed with white flowers, beige trimmed with eggshell flowers. <sighs> I want it so badly. In, uh, what does it say? Purple violet and lime or a lime green? Oh, man, it over. Again, I quite like D here, this Carol Brent bumper, another version of your favorite little hat style. And what a clever hat it is. Trimly styled of new wool felt, adds dash to more tailored outfits. The superb simplicity of this clever bumper is highlighted with deft self-trim touches, pert butterfly bows trim the back at each side, and V-shaped felt motifs with novel ornament spotlight is the center front. Felt backstrap holds hat securely to your head. So you, again, we have a felt strap coming down here over the back on top of the hair. A versatile functional hat, an ageless flattering budget, priced charmer in gay assortment of spring colors, black, navy, gold, medium blue, green mist. Oh, I'm very interested in this green mist idea. Um, red, light coffee, gay fuchsia, or gray. How come every other color can't be gay? <laughs> Only fuchsia is bright and exciting enough to be called gay. Where's the gay blue? That's my question. And even more hats. My goodness. You can see this one with the calla lilies here. It uh, reminds me of my little sequin number that I got recently with the wool calla lilies on it. This is B, a saucy Scotty of good uh, new wool felt, clever trim of self lilies and bow, circlet band for snug fit, colors black, medium blue, fuchsia, oh, just regular fuchsia this time, navy with matching veil, green mist, gold coffee with brown veil. Again, they come in so many colors. Where was the warehouse where these were stored and can I go and grab one of each? And these are juniors hats, so these are uh, for the younger set. And you can see that the, our models are a bit younger here too as well. But again, a variety of styles going on, including this sailor boatman cap situation. And again, funny little flower and pillbox tilty things. And then we have hats with charm for the more mature women. So those were our juniors hats. These are hats for more mature women, AKA, you know, 40 plus in this age, but oh, D up here. 
I bet you it comes in a bunch of colors again. Black, navy, or medium blue with white, beige with brown, all white. Ooh, I wouldn't mind having one in all white. That sounds lovely. This one. Ooh, so chic. It's very Casablanca, no? And these like little turned up, uh, it looks like a cornucopia with flowers in it. This buddy here would go for quite a bit these days. Jay here it was only $2.40 back in the day. But this, I, I love a lot of hats on these pages. This uh, shape here of this straw is so lovely. Oof. And again, we have another one of those, just flowers, just pile, pile flowers on your head. Although this little teardrop with heart shaped teardrop with feathers over the crown and then a big veil. Love it, it's ridiculous. But we're jumping into some casual fashion now. We have our trousers and sort of Western riding wear. Good companions for riding. Of course, we all want those jodhpurs now, but they're hard to find. Uh, what I do not want to wear, sadly, is this um, jumpsuit here. <clears throat> These overalls with no shirt underneath. It really is quite a look. Um, just not one that I'm interested in replicating, I think. <clears throat> We do have our high waist pleated front and creased trousers. You can see these still don't have cuffs as cuffs were regulated in the 1940s due to rationing as some of you have informed me. We have more casual outfits for summer here and uh, we can see we have these crop tops, very similar to that crop top I just made here on the channel. Um, especially this is all in all in one sleeve as well. It's just a little bit shorter so it's a bit more fluttery but very similar idea there. And another crop top down here with these culotte kind of shorts. Again, not necessarily my favorite. I kind of like the short flirty ones, the shorter. I say short as if these are short shorts, shorter shorts here. These ones come up to mid thigh. I do love this floral blouse here, even if I wouldn't wear these uh, shorts. <laughs> but we do have a similar tie top with ruffled shoulders going on here in a vivid fiesta print, sombrero or Brazilian designed by Ethel, whoever they are. Um, so we have our cultural inspirations of the 1940s here, which veer from uh, nice to extremely appropriative, depending on the situation. But this is quite a cute dress for summer here with this little bow at the front. And you can see they've turned the darts into just tucks or gathers here instead. And these are the those little cotton suits I like making and wearing in summertime. Big fan of those. They look so good with a big hat, of course. Here with more summer casuals, we have the Tubmaster, a crown-tested fabric of rayon cotton blend that is made to uh, be amazingly crease-resistant and shrink less than 1% and exciting colors, melon, lime, maize, light blue, or cinnamon brown. And we have our little bra top here. Bra and short set, distinctively cut in Medtex spun rayon and cotton Tubmaster fabric. Clever bra top is softly sheared at center and gathered at sides for an ideal contour fit and flattery. Over here we have our wardrobes in fine all wool flannel. This is one of those things where you can buy the pieces separately or you can buy the full set. Flannel for some design for imaginative, effective mix matching. And this gal is of course auditioning for the prequel of a Top Gun movie here with her aviator sunglasses. But a great more menswear inspired outfit here for those who don't like the fully femme look. This is another great option. And we have our swimsuits here for summer. Bright swimsuits in exciting style varieties. I quite like this one down here with a little skirt, but I just quite like that print honestly and the bow is fun. This looks like an ice skating costume honestly. And we have the kind of original prototype bikinis here which have very large bikini bottoms compared to today's, of course. But I quite like this uh, one piece with the cutout here. Very cute. And this kind of almost mid-century modern veering print here on this one. And again, different styles of sandals going on here. And we have more play suits, fashions on the sunny side, colorful, practical playwear. Apparently there was a lot of playing to be done. But again, these little tie tops, this one with sleeves, very casual little play suits for sure. And we see almost like t-shirt lightweight kind of sweaters here. And again, more of these crop tops, this time paired with like a tennis skirt. This is a very, <laughs> an outfit that would fit right in in the modern world. Funny enough. I mean, her skirt might be a little bit shorter, but it's a very modern looking outfit to our, to our eyes. And we have some blouses here. Very classic, very Agent Carter looking in my opinion. The bright side blouse right for now. Change of mood blouses for the changing fashion sense. It's the bright blouse for right now. For now is the time to color brighten your wardrobe. Let's see. It's a brilliant classic and acetate rayon jersey, Selenese yards, deep yoke shirt in front, pleated in back, padded shoulders, darted waistline, long or short sleeves, washed separately by hand, shocking pink, not gay fuchsia, shocking pink, okay? White, black, aqua, or gold. 
but classic blouses here again uh, sometimes can be found in either rayon silk or even in polyester uh, at the thrift store from the 1980s when they were of course kind of reissued and many more blouse styles here on the next page we have graceful shears and distinctive styles i guess that means fun stripes or like the ice cream gal serving you ice cream at disneyland or something which is what this looks like but we have some very peasanty sort of styles here almost could veer into edwardian territory with these gathered necklines and bows and i do quite like the striped versions this is almost could veer into a piratey shirt territory very quickly i quite like this number the ruffle i would probably leave off but the rest i quite like and i do like a gathered neckline like this this time with a stand collar i have done this neckline here on the channel before so i can put a card up to that here and even more smart simplicity blouses you can see how short these are these ones are of course worn to be uh, tucked in or not tucked in but most of the time blouses only came a little bit past the waist because most of the time they're being tucked in like this to high-waisted items and then we do have knitwear also over here as well and you can go ahead and pair your peasant blouse with a skirt like so um, a very classic look for the time especially for juniors but for everybody really Vivid border print skirt in spun rayon with unpressed pleats, button placket, dry clean, white, light blue, gold, American beauty with colorful print. And of course, these are th these two skirts here, well, even this one, but these especially, are just a rectangle of fabric gathered to a waistband and then with another longer rectangle gathered as a ruffle. So gathered skirts like these are exceedingly uh, easy to make. They're just not my favorite silhouette-wise. I, th I think they add bulk to the waist, which is something I'm always tr not, trying not to do. So you've never seen me make a gathered skirt but it was a popular style at the time especially in more casual wear and we do have our jumper and jerkin hits over here for those of you who like a jumper dress they were definitely a popular thing here in the 1940s of course you know completely different look if you wear it without the shirt underneath or with different shirts or blouses underneath but again notice how boxy these waistlines and shape is here compared to later on as the 1940s transition into the 50s with that new look coming in we have our classic pleated skirts here as i always say they made these in the 70s and 80s they are of course a little bit long so you might have to get them hemmed or hem them but pleated wool skirts they definitely made these in the 80s and 90s you can get them online or at thrift stores for of course cheaper than you'd be able to get a 1940s one and they probably will have less moth damage of course my favorite of all these is here number e with this waterfall situation going on the side this is just an a-line skirt with that waterfall added on it's got a two-layered front on it it's a dramatic side drape skirt styled in sleek rayon jersey wonderful for dress-up occasions three tapered gores in back for slimming smooth flattery clever simple but simple button closing at the trim waistline so this probably is a full wrap skirt and a one inch hem black cherry red aqua or dark brown drag clean for best results <clears throat> And we do have some casual jackets here as well. We still haven't gotten to our dresses. Hopefully we'll get there soon. But these very military inspired jackets here, even for women, they're of course just a little bit more fitted. Rugged and right for the outdoors. And speaking of being outdoors, it looks like we're standing at the edge of the Grand Canyon here in our fine little suits, especially this Colonel Sanders look with the bow tie here. Um, it's not the most <laughs> flattering outfit for anybody, I would think, but it is rather twee. But again, some great styling options here for those of you who wish to have vintage style, but don't lean too into the uh, high femme territory that I usually stay within. We have lots of high-waisted trousers, very menswear inspired silhouettes, including these boxy jackets here, but so stylish, so chic, such a great look, honestly. I love it, <laughs> especially, I like it for me, but I really like it <clears throat> on other people. Uh, and finally, we have found some dresses in the new rounded silhouette soft and feminine fashions we have this dress here which has still a very structured shoulder going on in here in fact all of these seem to so remember 1940s we still have our structured shoulder going on and of course it does lend to this illusion that makes the waist look smaller which is why i also love a structured shoulder and also this all-in-one angled sleeve here helps lend again to that triangle pointing towards the waist and this a-line skirt helps point towards the waist as well again just creating this hourglass going on here but this first dress here has a ton of pin tucking going on. It's gorgeous, would be a nightmare to try and make, so good for them. In a fine quality mossy rayon crepe. You know how I wish I could get a nice mossy quality rayon crepe. And then here we have the new apron silhouette, which does actually, now that they pointed out, look a little bit like you have an apron tied onto the front. So I see what they're saying. And over here we have uh, 
some very interesting sea life looking ruffles going on here with a little bit of piping trim. And personally, because I'm not really a fan of ruffles myself, maybe on a hat, but not necessarily on clothing. My favorite thing is actually this kind of braided updo hairstyle she's got going on. Then we have Just for Juniors sizes 9 to 17, but we can see this very princessy kind of corset inspired dress we have going on here with the faux lacing down the central section. I can put a card up to the video where I copy a butterick dress with a similar waist section where the yoke uh, dips down below the waist and above the waist, or it encompasses the entire waist section where a waist seam would normally be. But over here for Ward's Best Junior Dresses, we can really see how young these skew. Um, this sort of style really does skew kind of uh, almost looks like something a four-year-old would wear in addition to maybe a 14-year-old. Um, very, very feminine and frilly for the juniors over here. But I do, again, like these winged sleeves that point towards the waist and, again, give that illusion. And this, of course, the ruffle here is giving a wider hip, so it's trying to create that hourglass figure. But I'm afraid these junior favorites are just far too twee for me. But again, would you know, they look very 1980s. <laughs> Extremely. Uh, you can see where the 80s was copying all these things from. Personally, I prefer the Carol Brent Perinoli Classics over here, especially in this chartreuse sort of yellowy color here. And these, again, do come in three different fabrics. Um, and three different prices for those di different fabrics. So we have a rayon gabardine as our finest quality, smooth, textured, firmly woven fabric. And that one is $10.98. We have a spun rayon and cotton blend. That's gonna be $8 and a rayon shantung, a good quality, cool fabric with a nubby textured weave um, for only $6. So the different price ranges of those different textiles. And I do quite like this new casual silhouette. Lovely summer casual with new feminine importance in the smooth rounded shoulders. I think that this is funny. This this is such a rounded shoulder when we still have this very giant shoulder going on here. But I do quite like the shape of the neckline on this one. I haven't tried that exact neckline before. I think I would quite like that. This is just a um, all-in-one sleeve that's quite short, but because of the shoulder padding going on in here, it still has a lot of structure. And this, again, just has some of the dark fullness, which is still here in the sides. You can see it's just been used as tucks or gathering down here at the waist. But some of that has been moved up into the neckline as well. So there's still a little bit of gathering at the center neck as well. And we have Knights in Armor, a, a Bayo Tapestry inspired print here, basically. Wow. I mean, for us history nerds, does it get any better than that? Again, we have that all-in-one sleeve here, helping again create a wider shoulder and a slimmer waist. And this is being paired with a colorful belt to match the buttons, but white gloves and hat here. So, and a pearl earring, it looks like as well. Probably a white shoe. And speaking of very fun prints, we have this New York scenes finely etched on a pastel ground for a cool, sophisticated print in pastel blue or pastel lime with black print in pastel pink with navy print. So I'll take the lime with the black print of New York City on it in this all-in-one sleeve with a lovely shoulder pad. And then this does seem to have that kind of tab that comes down. Uh, there probably is a waist seam in here. And so this is just gathered along a central tab that goes into this bow somehow. And then the skirt is centered around this little circle here where the gathering has been focused. I don't really love the way that they've used dark fullness in this for like myself personally. I don't want to add bulk over my tummy personally, um, or even around my bust even. But in general, from like here up, I quite like it, and the fabric is, of course, stunning. But I would definitely wear either of these. Again, gathering over the tummy, not my favorite. It is uh, can be concealing or it can be adding, and I just prefer to have as few details as possible in areas I don't want people to look at. But I do quite like these square buttons and the geometric print. In all black, navy, or brown. Again, some more delicious rayon prints in actually a style I would wear right off this page. No alterations needed. This one comes in white background with multicolored floral. That's it, and that's I'll take it. $8.98. The side drape dress, ideal for spring and summer wear. This cool, lovely style is beautifully designed with a brief cap sleeve for a broad-shouldered look, slender surplus bodice and becoming v-neckline. Front of the skirt has a flattering side drape, well made with a side fastener and two-inch taped hem, and a soft, uncrushable rayon jersey that's printed with a pretty floral design, dry clean only. And I do quite like the front next to it. Of course, I would go with sans bow here. White background with fuchsia and green floral or white background with blue and green print. Again, we see something like a peplum here helping to add width to the hips and add flair to create this very sharp waistline. And something like this would be very easy to make from the modifications I show in my 
um, version of like the shirt front dress shirt dress front kind of video i show how to do those modifications in this video but that has the same just all in one sleeve here it's got a bit of a different shaped collar and the dart has been let loose into gathers at the waist but otherwise extremely similar soft feminine prints for gaily and lord in rayon crepe or tissue thin shears so again lots of rayon crepe going on here this dress is quite fun very classically 40s it's got these like spaghetti ribbon matching little ties here at the sweetheart neckline where it is gathered through the yoke here you can see there are darts here, but I think they're used as tucks, so it's released into a little bit more of a soft shape here. A shorter sleeve or something at a little bit more of an angle would help lend this a more like waist whittling, to use their kind of terminology, look, because this is not super contributing to the hourglassy look in the same way as something like this kind of sleeve is. You can see how this really creates this hourglass line, whereas this interrupts it a little bit um, and creates a bit more bulk through the top of this. So if you wanted to add width to the bust. This is a good way to do that with the sleeves continuing the width through the top line here. But to create that true hourglass, something like an all-in-one sleeve really helps out. And yet even more printed rayon. Rayon jersey, cool and uncrushable. And in these extremely fun prints. Also note here the size of the floral prints. I feel like earlier in the 1940s you have smaller scale floral prints and then later in the 1940s they do get to be a bit larger scale. So you can see the size of the spray of the flower on these is a little bit on the medium to large side, I would say. This one comes in aqua, pastel blue, or pink, each with black, and then white with beautiful multicolored flowers. Yes, please. White ground with fuchsia or violet print. Mm, violet. We have some Galian Lord Town Cottons here. In gingham at its best, designed exclusively for Ward's Cotton Shop. We all love a nice washable cotton. And again, look at this strong shoulder going on here. And again, the way that the sleeve tilts helps again with that illusion, and so does this peplum of having a very hourglass-shaped person. Also, these blue hats, hand them over. Don't mind if I do. And this sailor here, pop popular sailor on right, figure of rich-looking synthetic straw cloth, grosgrain trim, colors aqua, pink, lime green, or black. Once again, can I have this hat in lime green? I would be so pleased. I do quite like when they use a gingham in two colors like this. I think it's a really fun pairing. Also, it's really nice to do um, different scales of gingham, so like a smaller and a larger scale gingham mixed together can be quite pretty as well. And here we have the dream, aka actually being able to go into a store with all these lovely things and just pick them out. You know, if I could time travel, go shopping in the 1940s, and the fun I could have in a place like this, going to the glove counter and just saying, thanks, one of each. Princessy, almost little girl looking dresses, but for juniors. Um, again, these are quite young looking to my old aged 31 year old eyes but still like incredibly cute sometimes like this one i think an adult could get away with no problem we have woven striped seersuckers for women and this seersucker with an almost eyelet edge and trim to it would be so fun to have Ooh, what a fun fabric and what could be better for summer honestly than this as an outfit around the house if only we could get the good slippers i could always make a house coat but i can't get those good slippers anymore We have house coats in lovely long lines, and then also in uh, like very cushy chenille going on here. Looks like a bedspread. They have bedspreads, I'm sure, to match. And then we get to our fabrics. We have fashionable flannels and crepes, this in wool here, and then tailored fabrics and linings for making your own suiting. Then we have distinctive fabrics for all occasions. We have some taffetas, which are currently not available. Quilted rayon, lace, more taffeta, tucked sheer. And then these are uh, ads down here for simplicity paper patterns for the designs shown. But of course, I prefer seeing the prints naturally um, because it's a good reference for when I'm choosing fabrics for my own reproduction clothes. Um, and this one has little giraffes uh, in with po polka dots, which is very fun. But it really cannot compete with these butterfly-like spools of thread. <sighs> I mean... Come on, has anyone replicated this print yet? Because we need to do this on rayon crepe. Can you imagine with spool, like yellow spools and like green thread on black, obviously. Please. Although gay new prints is crossed out, which is terrible news. More suiting wools here and coating wool. Making your own coat, which is very advanced, but probably much cheaper than those coats in the front. We have our washable wearable cottons. And again, fun prints. 
Again, we see both smaller scale florals and larger scale here, although I quite like this Maleficent thorn situation going on. We have Swissette, which is like a Swiss dot, and printed voile, printed lawn. Again, very similar lighter weights of cotton. And again, we have more plastic raincoats here. So again, very much the like the Blade Runner coat here in 1946. Then we have, for versatility's sake, all of our dickies and necklines that can be worn underneath your jackets and fool them into thinking you have a dozen different blouses. Now, dangerously, here in 1946, the clutch handbags are just too good, <clears throat> in my opinion. Um, we have styles like this, which again, were very much redone in the 1980s. So you can get these soft leather clutch handbags in these oversized, larger sizes. Um, this one is 11 by 6 inches, which is actually on the small side for these. Some of them, like this one, uh, is 13 and a half inches wide. So you do get really long, large, oversized clutch handbags in this era. So ones like this you can find from the 1980s. What are harder to find, of course, are these Plastiflex clutch handbags. We also even have a telephone cord bag here as well. So for F, which is our really classic looking Plastiflex, top zipper handbag smartly designed with shiny plastic squares. Each square is embossed with a clover leaf and held together by half hidden lacing, size about 11 by six and a half, washable. And it does come in white in the smaller size in the same style. A seven inch wide one is also only in white. But of course they have a very similar black over here. This comes in black or brown. This really explains why when it comes to collecting plastic flex nowadays, it's much easier to find the white, black, and brown versions because often those were the only colors offered. Now this bag here, C and K, is extremely similar to my rainbow version of this bag that I have, um, which is why when I first saw that, I was like, wait a minute, that's a 40s plastic flex because I'd seen these in these catalogs before. Although these ones, of course, are not striped, but wouldn't a black and white striped one be nice? Again, the streamlined strips in black or brown plastic top zipper underarm style, flexible handbag made by a brand, new methods so the stripes stay put. The wide fabric gusset makes it roomy, nicely lined mirror and envelope coin purse comes in black or brown, or then of course in white. And we do have these rather like super Lego looking handbags with handles as well that are again in plastic tiles and again available in brown, black, or white. Even E here is a plastic uh, handbag. Your favorite top zipper underarm style in woven plastic because it wears so long and keeps its clean, fresh appearance. Unusual value at this low price, wide sides for roominess. The mesh is easy to clean, see instructions below. And it says all plastic handbags on these pages can be cleaned very easily by wiping them with a damp soapy cloth. Even ink and lipstick will come off if you wash them immediately after they are stained. So yes, I would like one of each of the top of this, no problem. And also this fun little one with the cat ears. Yes, thank you. And over here, I would like this giant clutch, L. It's 15 and a half inches. It's over a foot long, this giant clutch. Ah, <sighs> so cute. And this little pouch style with a big plastic clasp is cute. All the handbags here in 46. The answer is yes, I'll take them. And more classic styles that are easier to find 80s versions of than 1940s of are again these cinched faux leather clutches here. Uh, this one with, of course, a loose head clasp. Harder to get a hold of. Things like this that are made of cord, harder to get a hold of. But very classic handbags like this. They still made them in the 70s. You can get them and play them off as 40s, no problem. Again, you'll see handbags like these being sold online as labeled being from the 70s or 80s. And sometimes they are. And sometimes they're from the 40s, so sometimes you can get a really good deal. And we near the end of our women's wear adventure today in the shoe department, where we can see some rather good flat numbers, in addition to some high heels, the kind of shoe that I like. And of course, these are very similar to the Peggy heels over at American Duchess. And I think Remix offer some similar heels as well. And we have our saddle shoes, an official Girl Scout shoes, but very classic and stable practical shoes going on here at Ward's. Uh, sometimes Alden's catalogs have fancier shoes. But truly what I want are these L. I want a heeled, but like a blocky, nice stable heel, satin slipper for around the house. They don't have, like either they have the flat ones or they have the super, super sexy ones. And I just want th this one. <laughs> then we have some very cute summer styles here with little wedge heels. Good for when you need to walk on the grass, etc. I'll take the green, no one minds. And even very ballet flat looking shoes. So uh, again, you could definitely get away with not wearing heels. If you don't want to wear heels and you do want to wear vintage style, it's perfectly accurate, which 
who the heck cares in 2022 anyway, uh, whether or not your outfit is accurate to a past that we really wish we could get the heck away from in other regards. And here's my shoe section and the handbag to match it. Things are looking a little bit more venomous up in here. We've got these uh, H heeled peep toe pumps, slingbacks with a studded bow on the top of it. Now that's very Betty Page from Montgomery Wards, isn't it? Super cute. And of course these reptile skin up here. I would take this white shoe today, please. Especially this one as well over here. These are all a very cute. And some for some reason, a lot of the retro brands don't aren't uh, replicating shoes like this for some reason. They keep making the practical ones. When I want the impractical ones. And yes, we do have like crop top play suits that are actually pajamas that are styled for summer. Pajamas for summer. Tied crop top seems a little bit uncomfortable to sleep in, but y'all do you. Maybe this is what I'm supposed to be wearing around the house in the summertime. I really need to work on that. <laughs> I'll have to buy some sale cotton and get going on that for when I need to look cute around the house instead of my Star Wars shirts that we know I wear instead. And all the shapewear. Of course, uh, I do get that question quite a lot, what shapewear that I wear. And the answer is like a little bike short thing so that my uh, thighs don't rub together. And uh, Spanx if I need to feel like locked and loaded. And then I usually wear the Bali flower bra, which is a very uh, good pointy bra that's not too pointy. Uh, but Bali flower and Spanx are my go-to combo. I don't really uh, get involved with the whole girdle, corsetry, clips, and doodads situation myself. Uh, but of course, very serious corsetry going on here even in the 1940s. So when they say that the corset died in the 20s, not for everybody. But of course, here in the 40s, we have our classic rectangle with a head look for men. I think I prefer the trench just so it has a little bit more going on. Men's hats, of course, very important, but far less variety going on. We have our men's suiting here. Lots of double-breasted going on. It's funny how close to the edge that buttonhole is on these. Lots of double-breasted going on, but also single. The collars seem so high on these. I don't know, something about it looks off to my eye. We have our sport coats too as well. Men's casual jackets for year-round wear. Looks like everyone's going fishing or bowling. Your classic pleated front menswear pant. At least they have returned to cuffs already. And we just have our shirts. I'm sure there are details in here that a menswear expert would notice that alas, of course, I do not. Oh, here's the fun hats. You got your random like train conductor hats and your safari hats and random nonsense going on here. And you got your um, Gomez Adams robes, which are quite nice. And of course, you can also buy everything else under the sun, including Ward's paint colors, apparently. If you want to know what finishes your house need to be, we've got floor enamels, and we have decorative enamel, color varnishes, and then our wall finishes. It'd be fun to bring this and match the colors and have a green mist bathroom. But we have bedroom sets. We have vanities, which are very fun. We have your linoleum in every color. But of course, I just want to order all of the darn hats. But that was a quick flip through of Montgomery Ward's Spring and Summer 1946 catalog. I hope you enjoyed seeing some of these items. And again, I will post the scans of majority of the women's wear, at least, in the description um, below. I'll have a link to my Pinterest where I will have those scans for all of you to peruse at your leisure and save, of course, if you wanted to do. Thank you, as always, for joining me today. And I'll be back here with more sewing, vintage fashion, costuming, and crafting real soon. So I'll see you then. Bye.